Here we'll discuss the effect of the impact load in the case of beam. So when the beam is subjected to impact load, it will deform elastically and will store the energy in the material. To develop this concept here, we'll consider one simply supported beam and we have load equal to W which is drop through height equal to H. So as the potential energy will go on decreasing, the kinetic energy will be increasing and there is an impact. Because of this impact, the beam will be deformed elastically. So you will get here the deformation as shown in the figure due to the impact load and you will get an elastic curve as shown in this figure. Suppose this load is dropped from the support A at a distance equal to L1. Then you have to notify here what is the a deflection will take place. So at the same distance L1, we have to record the value of DL. So this will be the deflection will take place. Let mark equal to DL or let mark equal to delta. Now using the application of a work energy principle here, we can calculate here what is the total change in potential energy, total change in the kinetic energy and we can equate here the total change in kinetic and the potential energy is equal to the work done neglecting any amount of energy dissipated in the sound and heat. So same technique we are using here that already we have developed in the case of impact loading. So when the beam is subjected to an impact load it will deform elastically and store the energy within the material. This energy is known as the strain energy and is a measure of the potential energy stored in the beam because initially we have velocity equal to zero and finally when the beam will come to this position the velocity of the load will be equal to zero. Only change in the potential energy is responsible. This energy can then be used to determine the maximum deflection that equal to DL and the stress in the beam. Now how to calculate the stress in the beam is a slightly typical part. First let me explain here how we can apply the law of conservation of energy. So two reference will take here. One reference will take the initial position and one reference will take after impact. Now this is a bottom reference. So we'll consider this one is a datum. Initial position here is represented by the load which is at a height equal to H. Corresponding potential head will be H plus DL. So we have Z1 is equal to H plus DL. Initially the velocity will be equal to zero. And when it comes to this position, that is the datum position, in that case, we have value of Z2 will be equal to zero, as well as the velocity V2 is also equal to zero. So we can very well calculate here the change in kinetic energy and the change in potential energy. So we'll neglect here the energy dissipated in the form of heat and sound. And we can apply the work energy principle. According to the work energy principle, we have delta kinetic plus we have delta potential energy is same as equal to work done. Delta kinetic will be equal to zero because initial and final velocity will be equal to zero. Delta potential will be same as equal to m into g. Initial potential head will be equal to z1. Final potential head is z2 is zero and is same as equal to the work done. So in this fashion, we are able to calculate what is the amount of work done. So we have work done that will be stored in the form of strain energy is same as equal to mg that will be same as equal to the load w and we have z1 is equal to h plus dl. So this is a one step that you have to do. In the step number two, you have to apply here one load at the same distance equal to L1 from A. And this one is called as the equivalent static load WE. And this load is a gradually applied and will also develop the same deflection at the point where the shock load is applied at a distance equal to L1 from A. So this deflection will be same deflection that equal to DL and it is assumed here that this load is gradually applied load. And we know that when the load is applied gradually, then the work done will be same as equal to the product of WE multiplied by DL divided by 2. Again, we have to calculate here the same work done. Now work done will be this time is a gradually applied load is 1 by 2 multiplied by equivalent static load multiplied by DL. Remember here, W is the shock load will fall through the height equal to H. 
because of that we have work done equal to w into h plus dl question we have developed from work energy principle now the same amount of deflection is done by means of one static load which is equal to we and this is gradually applied load because of this gradually applied load we have a deformation equal to dl which is same deformation taking place when the load is dropped on the beam ab through height equal to h that equal to dl in the case of gradually applied load we have work done equal to 1 by 2 we dl so this figure and this figure is same figure so equation number one and the equation number two gives you same result it means that if I equate the right hand side, I am able to calculate the value of WE. So work done due to impact load is W into H plus DL and is the same work done is due to the gradually applied load is 1 by 2 multiplied by WE multiplied by DL. Let's say equation number 3. If you are familiar with the deflection, then you are knowing here that for any load acting here, there is a definite relation between WE and the deflection equal to DL. Now how to use this equation? For this one, we will consider here one simply supported beam and exactly at the center, that is at the mid span, which is at a distance equal to L by 2 from both the support, we have a load W is dropped through the height H. In that case, we have deformation will take place and this value of deformation DL plus H that will be the total potential energy of W that is equal to W into H plus DL. Now this amount of energy stored or this much is the amount of work done can be the same work done if I apply a load here that equal to the equivalent static load equal to WE. So if you have a point load is acting on a simply supported beam and we have a same deflection and in the case of simply supported beam for the point load the deflection DL will be same as equal to the load WE multiplied by LQ divided by 48 times of EI. So change in the potential energy will be equal to W into H plus DL and the same amount of work is done by the equivalent static load that will be equal to 1 by 2 W into DL. In this case we have WE that is the equivalent static load WE will be same as equal to 48 times of E into I divided by L cube and is further multiplied by DL. So this one is the example I am showing you. You must know what is the deformation for the loads either on simply supported or in the case of cantilever and this value of WE you can substitute now and we can solve here for dl so if substitute here then we'll get here w which one is impact load multiplied by height h through which it is dropped on the beam ab dl is a deformation text plus due to impact load is equal to 1 by 2 we now is replaced as 48 times of ei divided by l cube and this value of dl and this value of dl will become square so here we'll get 48 multiplied by E multiplied by I divided by L cube and multiplied by DL square. So if you solve it, you will get a quadratic equation and using the quadratic equation, we can find out the roots. So develop the quadratic equation, that is a step number two, then find the roots of the equation and then we can find out the value of DL. Once you know the value of DL, we can calculate here WE again by using the same formula that equal to 48 multiplied by E into I divided by L cube multiplied by known value of DL. In this fashion we can calculate here the equivalent load WE on a simply supported beam exactly at the center. So we will remove this figure and we have equivalent point load that will be equal to WE and we can very well calculate it value of WE in two steps. And now this problem goes to the shear force and bending moment diagram. This load is WE, so we have reaction here will be WE divided by 2 because of symmetrical loading. Here also we have reaction equal to WE by 2. And for this case we know that the SFD will be 2 rectangles. So we will discuss that procedure in the next slide. By applying the work energy equation and then 
the work done which is equal to the gradually applied load is 1 by 2 we multiplied by dl divided by 2 we can solve for we and now we are ready with this now what about the shear force and bending moment diagram so this load will move upward so we'll get one rectangle here in the sfd diagram and we'll get a second rectangle that is a negative rectangle so this one is a shear force diagram here this height of a rectangle will be same as equal to equivalent static load we divided by 2 we have length equal to l by 2 because exactly it is acting at the mid span and this height is also equal to we by 2 but below it so you have to write down negative sign now what we observed here is that this shear force is a positive value this shear force is a negative value at a we have shear force is positive at b we have shear force is negative exactly at point c here we have change in the sign of the shear force that is from positive to negative it means that we have maximum value of a bending moment will be same as the area under the shear force diagram so this figure represents here the bending moment diagram at support we have bending moment will be zero or the right support also that is at b we have bending moment equal to zero and this area here that is the area of this rectangle will give you the change in the bending moment from a to c so we have maximum bending moment will be same as equal to the area of a rectangle that equal to we multiplied by l divided by 4 so in this case we are knowing here the maximum value of bending moment and once we know the maximum value of bending moment we can calculate the stress using the flexor formula depending upon your section so maximum value of a bending stress is sigma b maximum will be same as equal to maximum value of a bending moment mx multiplied by c divided by i where c represents the top fiber or bottom fiber which one is away from the neutral axis for rectangular section the value of c will be equal to d by 2 and d by 2 for top fiber and bottom fiber similarly for circular section also the c will be same as equal to d by 2 so these are the step involved we'll quickly make the review of this we have load w is dropped through the height h and this load is dropped at a distance equal to l1 from a in general i am discussing this because of this there is an impact takes place and the beam will get a shape like this there is a deflection takes place equal to dl is same as equal to delta so we can apply here the change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy equal to the work done that is the work energy principle we can apply and in a very straightforward here from this position to this position we have total height is equal to h plus dl that much is amount of work done that is w into h plus dl and once we know this work done then what we'll do here same deflection will occur by one point load that we assume and is gradually applied load and if we know the relation between w e and dl then we can use that relation to find out the value of either dl or either w e but this time it's a gradual applied load so we have work done equal to 1 by 2 w e multiplied by dl both these equations represent the same work done so we have equation is w into h plus dl equal to 1 by 2 w e into dl now depending upon the type of the beam we have to substitute for dl or you have to substitute for w e in terms of dl find the roots of this quadratic equation and then finalize the value of w e for example i have taken here simply supported beam and the load exactly at the center so using this equation we can calculate here the value of dl once we calculate dl then we can calculate w e and then we have equivalent point load is acting that equal to w e is equal to 48 ei by l cube into dl once we finalize we then we have regular procedure of drawing the sfd and bmd draw the sfd draw the bmd find out the maximum value of bending stress flexure formula to calculate the value of maximum bending stress maximum bending stress will be m max into c divided by i it will occur either on the top fiber or bottom fiber which one is away from the neutral axis that distance will be equal to c distance i represent here the moment of inertia of the given cross section the video you are watching is from the app which is the more class app available on google store and in this app we will cover all subjects involved in mechanical engineering for gate join the course directly from your mobile the link is given here